Hello and welcome back to the lecture on applied econometrics. So, we are talking about autocorrelation. In the previous lecture, we have seen something interesting where we actually plotted data and we fitted a model and we actually estimated the error term u hat and we plotted u hat with time to see if there is any pattern existing. And we found indeed that there is a that it, it appears that there is a pattern, right? So, it is going slowly down, slowly up, and sometimes it, it looks like the error is expanding with time, right? So, in this case, in this kind of cases, we can basically think that perhaps there is autocorrelation, right? From the diagram, from the plot, we can make a sense that there might be autocorrelation, but to get a sort of you know uh, get the autocorrelation values in quantitative term, we need to do some test. And we have learned couple of tests, one was Darby Watson and another was Bruce Godfrey. So, let us actually in, in this lecture, we will talk about Darby Watson test, if we have this kind of data and how we actually perform Darby Watson test and what that means. And we again will uh, do the test using both R and Stata. Okay? So, let us, uh, let us uh, again sort of try to recollect the you know the decision rule that we use in case of Darby Watson test. Okay? So, we know that Darby Watson test the value actually lies between 0 to 4, right. Now, if we have let us say if we have a number line here, I will use a different color. If we have a number line starts from 0, it starts from 0. So, we remember that the when the Darby Watson statistic value is close to 0, we can say that there is a positive autocorrelation, right. So, if so, in the and that is why we said that if the values, if the Darby Watson statistic value is less than DL, some lower critical value for Darby Watson statistic. So, we can say our decision would be positive autocorrelation, positive autocorrelation, positive autocorrelation. So, we say the positive autocorrelation is present, positive autocorrelation is present if the value of Darby Watson statistic is actually lower than DL. So, it is close, it is basically between 0 to DL. DL. So, we can say that the value is going to be, so that we can say that there is positive autocorrelation. Then the, if we have and we also said if we have the Darby Watson statistic value close, let us say 2 at the value is equal to 2, we have seen that there is there is no autocorrelation, right. When the value is 2, when the value of rho was 0, we got Darby Watson statistic value is equal to uh, 2. So, when that is the case, there is no autocorrelation and we can and there was a Darby Watson upper du, which is the upper critical value for the Darby Watson statistic. And if the, if my uh, calculated Darby Watson statistic value lies in between these two. So, then I will write that there is no positive autocorrelation. So, that is my decision rule, no positive, let me write down, no positive autocorrelation. So, if my DW stat computed falls in between this, there is no positive autocorrelation. And in between this, we have said that this is a gray zone and no conclusive evidence or we cannot say anything, we cannot say anything conclusively, cannot say conclusively, conclusively. Similarly, now we can also sort of in the same number line, we can also explain the presence of negative autocorrelation, right. So, we know if the Darby Watson stat value is actually close to 4, then there is a strong negative autocorrelation. And we said that we again use the du and dl here. So, if we can have some critical value which is 4 minus dl, now dl is very low, dl let us say 0.5. So, it is if it is above 3.5 to 4, we say that there is negative autocorrelation we say that negative autocorrelation, negative autocorrelation, negative autocorrelation. And if it is close to 2, if it is close to 2, if it is close to 2, 
So, then we say that there is no negative autocorrelation, no, no negative autocorrelation in this zone and in between we cannot say anything conclusively, cannot say conclusively. So, conclusively. So, that is idea. So, essentially on uh, in one line we can actually summarize how we can take the decision regarding autocorrelation from the Darwin Watson statistic and we remember we got this formula d w is equal to 2 into 1 minus rho or 1 minus gamma whichever you want to write. Okay. Now, we got the decision rule uh, and now we will actually first we will use theta to actually see from our previous model if we can say something about the Darwin Watson statistic. So, let us go back to our strata. Now, we need to actually you know tell strata that this data set we have is a time series data and for that we need to write a command T S S A T set and the time value is year right. So, the moment I say it T set year it is uh, it will understand that it is a time series data. If I do not write so that will be not statistic will not run. So, I have already written it. So, now it will run otherwise uh, there would have been problem. Now, if we the command is pretty simple and it is the simple the command is d w stat that is it all you have to write is d w stat. So, the moment I oh first I have to actually first I actually have to run the regression before I actually write d w stat uh, I have to run the regression and the regression. So, like so now since I already have the regression here I have already run the regression. So, my Darwin Watson test so it will be performed on these residuals the residuals I have got from this regression equation the Darwin Watson test will be performed on this residuals. Okay. So, I really do not have to run the regression because I have already run it and it is stored in a strata memory. Okay. So, this this regression I ran in the previous lecture. So, if I write down d w stat, so it will it actually has obtained the residual terms from the previous model and based on that residual terms it has calculated that d statistic is equal to 1.09. Okay and the degrees of freedom it has 3 and 54. So, 3 is the number of parameters we have to estimate and 54 is the number of observation all right. So, we need to remember these two parameters no, note here uh, strata does not say anything about d u or d l and that is a little challenge that we have but we are going to actually resolve that. So, now we see that Darwin Watson statistic is 1.09 and if I go back to this so 1.09 so it is not it is it is not Two. So, let me use a different color it is not 2, it is not 2, it is not close to 0, it is somewhere you know somewhere here. So, I really do not know it might be there might be positive autocorrelation or there will be no autocorrelation. So, there are two possibilities. Okay. So, now I have to see which one is correct. Now, strata since from strata you cannot really say anything conclusively. So, what you can do is there is a Darwin Watson table available. Okay. So, we will actually search for Darwin Watson table, Darwin Watson table. So, we, we have handy tables available in internet. So, we can just you know open any of these uh, all I need is a table. So, for this tutorial yeah this is the table let me actually increase the fund otherwise we will not be able to see it. So, here you see so I have this two degrees of freedom k and n. Now, I remember my k was 3 whereas my n was 54. So, if I scroll down I see that my values are 50, 55, 60. So, I can say maybe it is close to 55. So, you can approximately take the value for 55. Okay. So, we will see if that is sufficient. So, for 55 for so for every degree of freedom so, so for, for every value of k they have provided d u and d l. Okay. So, let me actually show you. So, this is d l and this is d u. Okay. Now, if I go down, so I will have I will let this first 2 and oops sorry oops. So, I let this first 2 observation 4 observation go and I will have the 
du is equal to 1.284 and dl is equal to 1.505. So, let me write it down. My du here in this example, my du again let me check 1.21284. U one point two eight four and my DL is going to be one point five zero five five zero five. All right. So I got these values and my calculated value, my calculated value was one point zero nine. So my calculated value. So, my DW calculated, let me use a different color, my DW, oops, my DW calculated was 1.09. Now, what do I see from these three numbers? Now, it, we, so, it, our life is easy, we have all these three numbers and all you have to make is a decision. Now, my I see that DW calculated 1.09 is lower than DL, right? My DL here is 1.505, whereas my calculated value of DW is 1.09. So, it is actually falling in the zone of positive autocorrelation. So, my decision is going to be that my model is having positive autocorrelation, okay, uh, from the Darwin Orson test. Of course, you have to remember that Darwin Orson test is actually operating with certain limitations, but we will we'll talk about it when we address the Bruce Godfrey test. Now, we have seen this in Stata. Now, let me actually do the whole exercise in R. For R also, it is pretty simple. Just remember that uh, LM test is the package you have to have to actually run the Darwin Orson statistic. So, here also, <coughs> it is uh, it, it is actually, you know, uh, we all you have to do is DW test, I think the command DW test, very simple. DW test and all you have to do is to write down the name of the model here, so which is mod. So, the from which regression equation it will take the value, it is the, uh, the regression equation which is named as mod. So, if I write it here and I will find these values here. Now, look at it. So, the value of DW is 1.0948, exactly the value we got it in this data. But here instead of you know getting into all these upper critical, lower critical and everything we have a very simple va p value okay so we know how to what what p value means the p value is really really small here you see uh, 6.29 into 10 to the power minus 5 so that means really really low p value so that means my alternative hypothesis is given true autocorrelation is greater than 0 which is actually correct so you basically reject the null right so essentially you say that your model has positive autocorrelation so from both uh, stata as well as in r you have seen how to run the regression uh, Darwin Orson test and how to say if the model has autocorrelation or not. So, all right. So, with this we sort of you know do we, we conclude this lecture. We have um, done this hands on uh, on Darwin Orson test and in the next lecture we are going to actually do a little bit of Bruce Godfrey test. Okay. So, with this we uh, end this lecture. Thank you.